Welcome back. You're slowly but surely becoming a liquidation expert. Uh, we're looking into further case studies and insights in the following segment. In March 2020, there was a significant drop in cryptocurrency asset prices and MakerDAO was heavily affected. It was called the Black Thursday for MakerDAO where 8.3 million US dollars was liquidated uh, for zero die. So this was a single liquidation event where uh, MakerDAO liquidator basically created uh, a liquidation request uh, for zero die. So he don't wanted to repay the debt, uh, which is denominated in die, but he wanted to get the entire collateral back. And uh, this happened due to the opportunity to win liquidation auctions with zero bits. So 36% of all liquidations um, on MakerDAO that day uh, were affected. So the greatest vault, uh, as we can see here, lost like about 35,000 Ether. Um, and the most successful liquidator had a profit of about 30,000 Ether. Quite significant and unfortunately a, a big loss to the protocol at that day. Luckily, since then, MakerDAO uh, innovated and changed the liquidation mechanism since April 2021. So what was the actual problem? Well. The problem was that first the market collapsed, right? So if the if the value of the collateral is declining, then there are liquidation opportunities arising. At the same time, uh, if there's a lot of frenzy on the market, the gas price increases, and we've seen this over and over again on the Ethereum chain and other blockchains as well. What then happens is that MakerDAO bots should actually issue uh, bidding transactions in the auctions. But because the gas price was so high, the MakerDAO make bots were not programmed, they were not parameterized appropriately to actually uh, increase the gas price significantly to mine the liquidation transactions. And therefore, the issued transactions that should have created a bit in these auctions were not mined. And if they're not mined, well, then they don't hit the blockchain and they, they, they don't exist, right? it's as if they didn't happen. So this is certainly something that, that uh, you want to avoid. And um, I think what MakerDAO uh, really did beautifully now is to change the liquidation mechanism in, into a model where the uh, it's not possible to, to gain an auction with, with a zero bit. Um, you really have to, basically the price goes down and not up. That's the, I guess, the, the main insight. So what further liquidation insights can we find? So first of all, the, the health factor is uh, quite critical as we've seen, right? If you have a health factor of a position below one, then you are liquidatable. Unfortunately, however, the fixed spread liquidation does not necessarily increase the health factor. And we had this example where we are decreasing the, um, uh, we we're paying back the debt and we are, but we are also getting in return collateral. So the reduction in collateral, again, is, is actually bad for the health factor, right? So the fixed spread liquidation is not always helpful. What we've also seen is there's a, quite an amount of over liquidation. So liquidators sell excessive amounts of collateral of the, of the borrower's collateral because the close factor are, for example, 50%, meaning uh, you can pay back 50% of the debt but maybe just 10% of the debt uh, would suffice to render the position healthier again. So there's an excessive losses uh, that the borrowers have to pay. And finally, um, we, have, we have not seen many liquidators performing so-called optimal liquidation strategies. So liquidating up to the close factor is not necessarily the best strategy. Uh, instead, it's, it appears that two successive liquidations might offer a higher profit and we will go into a specific number example later but let me show you the algorithm for this so basically the idea is if you have a position that is liquidatable you you don't directly push it to the close factor but because you have a close factor of of up to 50 percent you want to use this close factor several times right so in the best case you liquidate for example 0.4999 percent Right? Uh, of the entire debt. So you repay 499% of the entire debt. And then you have a second liquidation where you push it beyond, uh, you, 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 you actually go 
to 0.5%. So you repay 50% of the debt. And you, and in that particular, through, through such case, you can pay back more debt than, zero, than 50% and uh, benefit from this uh, increased or the, the bonus that the liquidator gets. So now, obviously, it depends. The, the exact numbers depend a bit on the value, on the health factor, on the collateral, on the debt value. Uh, but you can uh, feel free to apply the algorithm here that you that you see. So the intuition is really, you you don't you don't bring in the first liquidation you don't bring the health factor beyond one, and in the second liquidation you bring it uh, above one, but uh, in a way that you maximize your potential revenue as liquidator. Furthermore, so if you're a borrower uh, or if you're a lender, you, you want to know which of the liquidation mechanisms are the best for you, right? So um, especially if you're a borrower and you see like that the platform like DYDX does not have a close factor, right? So it means you can actually liquidate 100%, so there's no, no limit. Then you can see that the profit to volume ratio here over time so DYDX here is like almost always the highest, right? So this is the profit to volume ratio for the liquidators. So if this profit to volume ratio is higher, then this means this is better for liquidators, but worse for borrowers. And um, so data basically suggests that auction liquidations might be more borrower friendly, right? Because uh, make it out here is the orange line, which is a bit, a bit lower. Uh, we interestingly see some difference between RV version one and version two, um, but this is basically the the like one possible uh, normalized metric to compare which liquidation mechanisms are nicer or more profitable or more safe for which actors of a of a borrowing lending market. Next is uh, the dangers of diverging spirals. So um, we've seen this on chain several times. So if you have a liquidation event, then the liquidator sometimes atomically already um, uh, liquidate, right? So they create a, a liquidation because the collateral price declines. Then the liquidators are worried. So they might actually uh, sell their, their collateral that they purchased, which will then trigger additional liquidations. And this is basically a... Uh, possibly um, ongoing cycle and it's called a uh, deleveraging spiral right so uh, upon liquidation here the the liquidators will will sell the collateral which then triggers the price decline which then triggers again further liquidations so it might be a good question whether liquidation is a good solution to secure lending pools uh, there might be there might be other solutions or I'll invite you to, to propose any, any ideas that you have. Let's dive into a particular on-chain study. So um, how to apply an optimal fixed spread liquidation. So I've already shown you the algorithm and you may now um, look into this, this very analytical example. So we take as, a, as an example a liquidation that happened on November 26, 2020 on Compound. The liquidation threshold is 0.75 and we have here uh, the particular block state that we give you and there's also a price update afterwards and after the price update we can see that the position here becomes liquidatable. Right? So feel free also to, to stop the slides and look in, into the data itself yourself in more detail but we have shown you here basically the entire the entire amount so the value of the debt, the value of the collateral, and uh, the, the which tokens were, were uh, participating in this particular example. So what we have found is that the original liquidation, so the liquidators on chain choose to repay 46 million US dollar. Um, he then received 49 million, so he realized a profit of about 3.7 million die which which in itself is is not a bad profit right but we are speaking here about uh, making things uh, optimally so it's not it's clearly not the optimal strategy 
So the liquidators in this particular example has actually not liquidated the maximum close factor that he could have. So he could have gotten uh, 3.73 million if he would have pushed the liquidation up to the maximum uh, liquidation uh, close factor threshold. And we show, however, that if we perform two liquidations, so we have a first liquidation, liquidation number one, which does not bring the, uh, the position back to a healthy state, and then we subsequently apply a second liquidation. If we do those two together, right, we could have achieved a profit of 3.743 million die instead of the original um, 3.69 million die. So these amounts are not negligible, right? These are these are significant amounts that we could have gotten in addition to the uh, to the original liquidation profit. So I we believe that liquidators will become more uh, professional as time goes on, as 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 we have seen in DeFi in general. So this will become a more competitive game, and liquidators will uh, gain more money from borrowers. So what ideas do you have to avoid liquidations? So feel free to pause the video, think about this for a bit. And I think, I think we, need, we need solutions to, to, for other designs to, um, to change the, the way that the liquidation mechanisms are working. Um, but I'll leave it up to you. And uh, feel free also to su suggest in the chat or in the forums, and we can discuss further. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope these additional insights about liquidations, who gains, who loses, uh, are helpful to you. Um, feel free to go on chain and check out liquidation events yourself. No, no, as, as usual, right in DeFi, everything is transparent. So you can verify uh, the techniques that other people apply and learn yourself.